Hello, and welcome to today's episode of Over 50 and Flourishing. We are getting comfy in my office, in my house. How nice to be able to host a podcast here at home. And I'm able to do so because my guest today actually lives not too far from me, and in fact, works inside the same building as me at Merritt Street Media. Her name is Maddie Zering, and she has become a really neat friend. Um, we're going to have a conversation today, really woman to woman. She is a... She First of all, she's a marketing genius, and you're going to hear about her story. Uh, she was behind uh, Red Bull, one of their huge campaigns. She knows some incredible people. She's met astronauts. You know, she can tell a story about marketing that's just um, so profound and and really um, so innovative. But that's one of the reasons why I have her on today. Not only is she so smart, but she is an incredible woman who in her mid forties is really learning the balance of career, family, motherhood, being a wife and prioritizing what matters. And I love having these heart to heart conversations with really impressive women, because what we find out at the end, we um, all have so much more in common. And I think you will find yourself in a little bit of Maddie's story today. So please welcome to over 50 and flourishing a super smart funny, lovely woman, Maddie Zering. Don't you just love the coziness of fall? You know, wrapping up in that wonderful cozy blanket or adding beautiful scented candles to your space. Well, when I'm looking to add some seasonal change, I go to Jenny Kane Home. I love refreshing my space with new accents, scents, even furniture to really breathe new life into my home. Jenny Kane Home Essentials makes it so easy to make sure my space is nothing short of cozy perfection. It is the ultimate destination for elevated home essentials. Jenny Kane Home has everything you need to transform your space into a luxurious sanctuary. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order, J-E-N-N-I, K-A-Y-N-E dot com, promo code Dominique15. Curate your dream home with Jenny Kane. Let's face it, going through midlife isn't easy, especially with brain fog. So as you know, staying sharp and focused, it's kind of a non-negotiable. That's why so many women are turning to mud water. It's a coffee alternative that fuels your day without the crash. It has a blend of organic functional mushrooms. It is designed to optimize your mental clarity and overall well-being. Each ingredient in mud water serves a purpose. With organic ingredients for a clean, natural boost, mud water's smooth, earthy flavors provides a delicious and natural source of energy. For a limited time, our listeners get up to 43% off your entire order, free shipping, and a free rechargeable frother when you use code OVER50. That's up to 43% off your order with code OVER50 at mudwtr.com. After your purchase, I'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Whether you are prepping for a busy day in the office or just trying to keep your mind sharp, Mud Water is here to help you feel your best naturally. Start experiencing the benefits of functional mushrooms today. If you have followed me for a while, you know I love a meticulously clean home. And when I say clean, I also mean non-toxic. What do I use to get my home sparkly clean? It's Branch Basics. It is the only non-toxic, all-natural, plant-based cleaning products that are so seriously effective. It is safe for your skin, safe for your pets, safe for your children, even so safe, you can wash your fruits and veggies with these products. You no longer have to wear a hazmat suit while you're cleaning up. For a limited time, head over to branchbasics.com over 50 and use code over 50 for 15% off your entire order. That is 15% off your order at branchbasics.com over 50 with promo code over 50. Choose Branch Basics because cleanliness matters.
Maddie, it is so good to have you in my house. I normally see you at Merritt Street dragging the halls. You, you're usually coming after me with like, oh wait, we need you to do, we need you to do this project. And we were thinking about this. Um, I have absolutely loved getting to know you. You know, you're an amazingly bright, talented woman. And I think you've got a lot to be able to share today for my audience. So first of all, thank you for coming to my home and thank you for being on Over 50 and Flourishing. Thank you so much for having me. I mean, I'm completely flattered. This is such a privilege for me. Well, likewise, likewise. First of all, are you over 50? Not quite. You're, you, but you're getting but close. But I'm broaching there. You're broaching. Huh? I'm, I'm right at the 45 mark. Oh, Maddie, you're not even close. <laughs> you know what, though? I'll tell you this. Um, I have a lot of women who listen who are in their 30s and 40s, and they say, I want to tune in because I want to get a leg up. I want to know what's going on in this decade and beyond so that I can be teed up, whether it's about health and hormones, whether it's about business, success, you know, relationships, you name it. So I love, I love having a mid 40 year in here to be able to share a story about career and your career is a rock star career, but you're not just a career woman, you're a wife you're a mom and you've got a journey and a story to share. And what's neat about this podcast is I think a lot of women find themselves in other women's stories, right? That's yes, how we find a sense of connection. So I remember when, when you came to Merit and you are in charge of marketing and I'll let you kind of share your title and what you do, but everybody said, Oh, you're going to love Maddie. She's the, she's the brain behind Red Bull and the big Red Bull campaign. So everybody's like, what, <laughs> what are you talking about? Um, but let's just talk a little bit about you and your backstory and how you got to where you are today. Oh, well, thank you. Well, I'm certainly not the only brain at many tables, but yeah. I love to collaborate and I love to do big things. Mm -hmm. And how I happened into Merritt Street is I happened to read that Dr. Phil was going to build this network mm -hmm. in North Texas. And I thought, no way. Yeah. The studio and everything, that's not thats not a North Texas thing. thing right. That's a Hollywood thing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I had lived in LA for about five years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I, I just, it was so unusual. And as I dug in, I, I said, you know, I really do think I could help build that. I don't know exactly how, but they, they must be starting this up and they must need help. Mm -hmm. And so I had reached out um, to our network executive to just offer my services in any way I could. And it actually turned into more of a formal job offer. And I have mm -hmm. to say, at first, I thought it was going to be a little bit of a digital media network. Mm -hmm. And I showed up to meet him and took a tour. And I thought, wow, this is, Toto, you're not in Kansas. This Anymore, is yeah. definitely... Legit. It legit, it, it, they were it, it, what's being built is absolutely phenomenal, mm -hmm. and what we've been developing together, and what you and Fanchin have brought to the show. I mean, it's absolutely original, mm -hmm. and that's what I'm proud to be a part of in whatever way I can. Tell us about your your marketing expertise and what it what it means. And you know, marketing is I don't care whether you're doing it at a TV station or you're in real estate or whatever, marketing and strategic marketing is critical for any career to take off, is it not? Absolutely. And it's 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 truly about storytelling at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. I, I I call myself a brand curator or a brand narrator. It's about telling stories because we have always, I've worked with a lot of really brilliant people. And one mm -hmm. thing I've learned and what we've always exercised is that people don't identify with brands. Mm -hmm. They identify with people and the connection and the emotion uh, to the people behind a brand or in front of a brand. And I love crafting a way for someone to come from point A and get to point B or C and never even had started out thinking they would go there. And so that whole journey that, which in marketing is, uh, you know, we, it's not a business, business show here, but we certainly have a craft to, uh, a holistic strategy that touches people, consumers mm -hmm. everywhere they are, not in just one way. And so I, I think storytelling is now, as you all know, mm. omni-channel. What makes, what makes for good marketing? I mean, how do you craft a good story? Yeah. And how do you, I mean, tell everybody about the Red Bull um, campaign and that story so that they can, they'll be like, oh, I think I remember seeing that. What was that <laughs> well, like? The brilliance of Red Bull. Uh, I had the fortune, great fortune to work there for over 15 years. And um, the great idea of what Mr. Matashitz put together when he built that brand was based on giving people 
platforms to do what it is they want to do, but maybe couldn't do themselves. Mm -hmm. An enabler, an enabling brand and marketing, it's often labeled that. Mm. And so everything we did was not something that we as marketers spent time in the boardroom or in the conference table, whiteboarding, oh, we're going to do a, you know, a special skydiving project next year. It was very much from the athletes with whom we worked. And so the example of probably one of my biggest accomplishments, uh, at least more of the one uh, most well-known was something called Red Bull Stratos. Mm. And we had an athlete, his name is Felix Baumgartner. He uh, was one of the original athletes of Red Bull. Red Bull's a little over 30 years old. And uh, he had a dream to fly and jump from the edge of space. And he came to Red Bull and Mr. Matashitz and said, can you help me make this happen? Mm -hmm. And there's, uh, let's just say there's, we're not, they were not a risk adverse culture at Red Bull. Mm -hmm. (laughs) We were ready to take it on. Hence the name of the brand. (laughs) Absolutely. And and not purely from the spirit of marketing, just to sell something. It was truly built as a scientific flight test program because I think what a lot of smart marketers have learned in the last five or so years is you have to be authentic. Mm. It's probably one of the most overused words in marketing. Um, authenticity isn't something you create. It's it's truly by design. Right. And you can only be authentic if you're actually real. Mm-hmm. And this is a real idea that came from a real athlete. And so October 14th, 2012, Felix Baumgartner, we lifted him up to the edge of space and he skydived back. 120,000 plus feet and uh, over 22 miles, 23 miles, uh, and safely uh, parachuted back to earth. And along that way, just all of the stories, we've had several documentaries we made about the projects. Um, I just got to touch all corners of the world, Mm. got to touch all types of people. And I think one of the evolutions in that story and that narrative was how Felix wasn't just going up to go do this. It was about how you took one person who's a skydiver by mm-hmm. trade, base jumper, who really had a hard time relying on other people to make him successful because he's his whole life is in his hands. Mm-hmm. When you're a skydiver, base jumper, everything is in your control. And so psychologically, he had to really flip the switch for himself uh, to, be, to trust the team. Mm. And so through that project, which I worked on for about seven years, took about seven years for the, the time I was on it, we uh, built a team, a really close-knit team, and much of it was led by a gentleman who uh, I adore so much. He passed away a couple of years ago, uh, Colonel Joe Kittinger, hmm. and he was in the U.S. Air Force, and he was really the first person to ever skydive from the edge of space. Wow. Um, and the spirit, they called him a pre-astronaut. Mm-hmm. It was before Apollo, all, Gemini, all of that. Um, and he, his work is what made it so that pilots could actually go to space safely because he tested... Um, one of the first sh- uh, spacesuits, as well as um, some other contraptions that helped them come eject safely if they needed to. But he was just an incredible guy, and he taught all of us, a lot of us. We had all ages on that project um, about what it really means to do something as a team. Sometimes the output mm-hmm. isn't always the most important. Yeah, it's you know it's the journey. It's really getting there together and trusting it, each other, trusting each other, and and the importance of the collaboration. And to your point, the importance of the authentic journey, yeah. which you got to bring with you. What what an amazing experience! And and every some people may not know how was that then tied to Red Bull. How was that made into a ca- campaign? Yeah. So at that point, we were really developing in, um, our our global media business. Mm-hmm. So um, we actually got. You know, several media outlets <laughs> that I worked with ended up coining us as the um, uh, media company that happens to own a, an energy drink because uh-huh. we were doing so much content. And so we really formalized this and exploited the the, the content from this uh, for all different kinds of channels, feature film, television products, um, obviously um a live, uh, live stream on YouTube. So back, this is 2012. YouTube has really only been around for about In two its years. Infancy. Yeah. Well, it had been around longer than that, but live streaming on but the internet was not a thing. Not yet. a thing at all. <laughs> so, uh, I'll never forget going with my, um, wonderful, uh, one of, I've had some great managers and, uh, his name is Werner Brell and he and I, and my, uh, my buddy, David Brooks, uh, we're two young guns and he, he's young gun too. we we just said, let's fly up to San Francisco 
meet with Claude Rubel at YouTube, YouTube Sports. And we did. And I'll never forget that meeting. And he said, you want us to be your partner on what? And you really think we can do this? And you think we can do it live? Yeah, I think we can. And so we did. <laughs> and we nearly broke the internet. Uh, wow. 9.5 million concurrent viewers. Unreal. And um, the really neat thing about Red Bull Stratos, when you ask about the marketing piece, uh, a lot of people would think that, oh my gosh, Red Bull must have sunk so much money into advertising and that sort of thing. We did not. Was it just the live stream that did it? The, well, we could because of the weather forecast, you couldn't tell people when to watch, mm. which was my job, you know, is to get as much viewership as we could through traditional television partners. Discovery was, was our traditional partner here, our host broadcaster in the US. Um, and so <laughs> we couldn't tell people when to watch. So the only advertising we did, like actual paid, was to Facebook back then on a an event listing. So that way, when we knew we were going to have a good day, we could we put a bunch, not a bunch, not not very much, like not what you would think, behind uh, telling people the lights are on. Um, Wild. Yeah. And doing so in a way that was so ahead of its time back then. Because back yeah. then, I mean, it, it, the internet and, and using social media, I mean, that was just kind of coming into normalcy, but it was way more Truly. of a traditional media ad buy back then. Truly. And, and video wasn't even as much a part yes. of social at that point. So it was very much... Um, a, a, an opportunity for us to show how one man's dream mm. can truly become a reality. And I think not just in the States, but around the world, everyone can aspire and rally around that. Absolutely. So it's the American the end, dream. Yes. Even if you didn't know who Felix was, and, or he wasn't your national hero, of course, in Austria, where he's from, he was a superstar. But even if you didn't know who he was, it was one man, one dream, and you made it real. And when you can watch live, and we had the boldness to broadcast it live, yeah, uh, and you get to see that it's it, it was our Apollo moment. Yes, it was, and and risky because you didn't know how it was going to end up. We did not, but that's you know that's the sign of any bold <laughs> move is rolling the dice and seeing it's where true. it goes. Um, what a cool story! So my guest today is Maddie Zarang. She is head of marketing at Merritt Street Media. It's how I've gotten to know her, but I really want you to get to know her. I think it's wonderful, Maddie, hearing stories of women who've done big, bold interesting things. You happen to be in the area of marketing, but it applies not just to marketing, but it applies to life as well. And we're going to touch on all of that um, on the backside of this commercial break on Over 50, which you're not, but will be, and flourishing. Don't you just love the coziness of fall? You know, wrapping up in that wonderful cozy blanket or adding beautiful scented candles to your space. Well, when I'm looking to add some seasonal change, I go to Jenny Kane Home. I love refreshing my space with new accents, scents, even furniture to really breathe new life into my home. Jenny Kane Home Essentials makes it so easy to make sure my space is nothing short of cozy perfection. It is the ultimate destination for elevated home essentials. Each piece in their California-inspired collection is designed so intentionally. Better yet, the quality is so good, it makes it seem like everything is custom-made. Best part? Jenny Kane home pieces arrive within a matter of weeks. I have their candles all around my house. The scent is absolutely beautiful. If you're looking for just a little bit of a refresh, Trust me, go look at Jenny Kane. Jenny Kane Home has everything you need to transform your space into a luxurious sanctuary. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Dominique15 at checkout. That's 15% off your first order. J E N N I K A Y N E dot com, promo code Dominique15. Curate your dream home with Jenny Kane. Let's face it, going through midlife isn't easy, especially with brain fog. So as you know, staying sharp and focused, it's kind of a non-negotiable. That's why so many women are turning to mud water. It's a coffee alternative that fuels your day without the crash. It has a blend of organic functional mushrooms. It is designed to optimize your mental clarity and overall well-being. Each ingredient in mud water serves a purpose. With organic ingredients for a clean, natural boost, 
Mudwater's smooth, earthy flavors provides a delicious and natural source of energy. You can take a scoop, put it in water. You can stir it with your favorite milk alternative, even blend it in a smoothie. Their blend contains cacao and chai for a hint of caffeine in that chocolate-like flavor. Lion's Mane for focus. Also, it provides a natural energy and supports your immune system. Win, win. For a limited time, our listeners get up to 43% off your entire order, free shipping, and a free rechargeable frother when you use code OVER50. That's up to 43% off your order with code OVER50 at mudwtr.com. After your purchase, they'll ask where you heard about them. Please support our show. Tell them we sent you. Whether you are prepping for a busy day in the office or just trying to keep your mind sharp, Mudwater is here to help you feel your best naturally. Start experiencing the benefits of functional mushrooms today. Welcome back. I have in my home today, which is so, so nice to have you over, um, Maddie Zering from Merritt Street Media, um, head of marketing. We've been talking about your big marketing campaign at Red Bull. Um, I, I now know you from Merritt and the projects that you've worked on there, but I would like to talk to you about um, we talk a lot about balance, you and me, the, the infamous and the elusive word balance. You're a wife, you're a mother, you are a very strong career woman. You're in your mid forties. Um, tell me where you are in that journey. Mm -hmm. It's a great topic. I Isn't think it? it's one that we all can relate to. Mm -hmm. I think where I've fallen is exactly where I need to be right now. Mm. And it really starts with I think two parts. There's one about your own identity, and then there's one about prioritization, right? So identity and priorities. And for me, a few years back, when you've worked someplace a long time, you mm -hmm. wonder, well, I know I'm good. Mm -hmm. I know I'm good here, and I know my I'm, I'm an expert and a resource for people here, but can I do that elsewhere? Mm -hmm. And so you have a little bit of this, hey, I guess it's an insecurity for a bit. And I, I started to have to unravel my identity as a person in general from a place that I absolutely adore, still adore, mm -hmm. um, when you've been there so long. How long were you there? 15 years. Yeah, it's a good stretch. And it's, it, uh, you, 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 I really had to be intentional about taking my identity, my work identity, and making that a work identity, mm -hmm. not your whole identity. Which is something that men stereotypically do. But now mm. women, as being you know strong in the workforce, we're starting to do yeah. that too. And we got to be careful. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. My worth is not my what work. I do. Exactly. Yeah. And so uh, that was probably the best exercise I ever did. I don't think I started it intentionally. Mm. <laughs> well, why, what happened? Because usually yeah. there's there's a smack in the face. There's something that happens yeah. that makes you realize, wait a second, I'm getting too caught up in what I do. Yeah. Did, I, did that happen to you? You know, I think it I think it started to happen when I realized that there were there were some things that I, I didn't know if I could continue doing the exact same way, mm. even though it'd be accepted. And I thought, well, gosh, if I'm not doing it the exact same way, if I'm not gonna do that here. What does that look like elsewhere? Can I can I even do that elsewhere? So I wouldn't say it was one specific moment, mm -hmm. but I would say once I was able to really sort of separate work identity and my worth and work from the rest of my life, I was more empowered than I'd ever been. Hmm. And that allowed me to not only trust in my faith and God and what mm -hmm. path I'm put on um, on the spiritual side, but then Truly just listen and be open to the right opportunities at the right time. Yeah. And then the second part, especially uh, more recent and not just more recent all the time, once you do have a, a child, I think it's different when you're, it's just you and your partner. Mm -hmm. But once you have a kid, it's just no longer about you. My no. grandmother told me that. And I have to say, I was a little sad. <laughs> Um, did it really sink in though? <laughs> did did you really it, believe it back uh, then? Or the, I think I did enough because I yeah. I did a little bit of mourning of myself a bit mm. um, before I even gave birth because I knew I I wouldn't be able to do what I want to do all the time, mm -hmm. and that's not a bad thing. Yeah, at the time I think I was a little intimidated by that, but when I I think it really that was probably my first lesson in priorities. Yeah, because when you can go in knowing what your priority is going to be, everything else is after that. And so I knew that once um, I, I, you know, I'm first, first a wife, then a mother, mm -hmm. and I wanted to be really good at the, both of those things. Yeah. 
Um, and it's, it's a struggle to make sure it's I hard. keep doing that. It's well, it's hard when you are so accomplished professionally and look, you, you and I know you've got to put in the hours, the time, and it's not just physically showing up somewhere. It is the mental bandwidth mm-hmm. that goes in that, right? You, you don't just leave the office and then tune everything out. You're, you're thinking, yeah. you're planning, you're strategizing, your head's always in the game, but yet you've got to come home and your head has to be in the game you know, as a partner, as, as a mom. And that's where, I think that's where the struggle lies is that oftentimes we start to feel a little out of kilter and like, we're not fully in the game in one way or another, you know, that something is drawing too much attention for too long. Did you ever have that, that struggle? And how old is your daughter now? By the way, she's 10. Okay. And absolutely, it was it was it's actually not too many months ago, I, I called on one of my wonderful mentors in life. Her name's Katie Harvey. And uh, I've known her for many years. And I said, Okay, how did you do it mm-hmm. <laughs> with your boys? And they're both in college, and they're doing fantastic. I said, How did you do this? Um, raise wonderful, productive citizens and work and, ha- and build your company, etc. And uh, she gave me great advice. And it's really important. And I use it, I use it all the time now, which is, you you need to just have the conversation with the important people in your life. For, mm-hmm. for me, for instance, with Zoe, it's about making sure I say, is, is this activity tomorrow important to you? Is mm-hmm. it important that I'm there? Mm-hmm. And it's so surprising, and you, re- you sometimes forget this with children. We underestimate them greatly. They, they know what's important to them or not. Mm-hmm. If, if, I don't, if I'm not at something, she'll know. And, and she would have been able to tell me where she wants me. So that's actually been a great helpful exercise for us. Mm-hmm. Because a lot of times she's like, Mom, no, I don't want you at karate anymore. Yeah. <laughs> the, you're embarrassing you're, me yeah, in the sidelines. That's side for lines. the little kids. Their parents still come. I said, well, yeah. can I still go to volleyball? Is that important mm-hmm. for, for you? Like, yeah, of course. So you just have to talk about what's mm-hmm. important to them. It's not always about me. You know, and I think that's something that I really try to keep in check. It's not just about me. Mm-hmm. And if I have a conversation with someone, then I can build what's important to me around that. Yeah, that's really, that's really, really good. I, you know, you remind me as you say those things, you remind me of conversations that I would have with Styles, mm-hmm. just because my work hours were always so weird, you know, and I was working late at night. So sometimes you couldn't make the afternoon yeah. practice or, or whatever, but, you know, and he understood. Um, and then there were some days I would try to take days off. I mean, I would use half vacation days to be able to go. And then, and then he knew those were special days, you know, that I was making the effort, but it's not until you have those conversations and you really listen to your children and you're right. You know, they offer you a lot of wisdom and pearls of, um, just what they need in the moment and how can Mm -hmm. we best meet that. But oftentimes don't you feel that we are, we kind of live in a state of guilt that we don't go there and then we just feel guilty for what we're not doing. Yes. I, I had, a lot of guilt along the way. And I think it just never forget. I think what I feel more guilty about sometimes is when I am there mm. and not present. Yes. Cause I, it's so easy to slip into your phone mm-hmm. or a conversation with a friend, which is important. Sure. But sometimes I think, okay, you're here right now. Engage. And sometimes it's hard for me. I've never been particularly good with kids. <laughs> So I'd like said the mother of a 10 year old. Yeah, not like very good at crafts or but she's, anything she's like that. She's alive and she's here yes. and she loves you. So but that's what good. I have to remember is just, just it's, it's not what you do. It's that you're doing something. Yes. And I have to remind myself of that constantly, Dominique. Mm-hmm. I wish that I, I, it was more natural for me to just be present, but it's mm-hmm. very something I have to work on. You know what? I'm, I'm grateful you brought that up because I think a lot of, it's so funny I don't know what this is about parenting, but we are just sort of led to believe that, oh, everything's going to be great. Mm-hmm. Oh, everything's going to be perfect. You're going to have this great pregnancy and it's going to be amazing. And you're going to have these rainbows and unicorns and blah, blah, blah. And nobody talks about the hard stuff. Nobody talks about the challenges. Nobody talks about, you know, the what ifs. Nobody talks about, you know, what if you're a working mom and, and what if it's not as innate or natural yeah. for you, you know, and, and how do you handle that and how do you overcome that and still be present and still feel like you're being yeah. a good mom without beating yourself up for not being the quote unquote perfect mother, yeah. whatever that is and, and looks like, which by the way is a fallacy and yeah. is non-existent. <laughs> so we need to, we need to throw that out the window yes. right now, yes. but my goodness, you know, it's, we are not all in the same box. Well, and we've all, we have all have great examples and that's right. what you have to turn to. It's not about who you see on TV or what you watch in the movies. It's, it's about who are those women that you've surrounded yourself in your life mm-hmm. with that you can take something from and maybe not everything. Right. My sister is a full-time mom. 
call them full-time moms, the, the ones who that's their full career. Sure. And she's fantastic at it. I mean, my mom and my aunt and I always joke, we, like, we everyone wishes Morgan could be their mom. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, because she's there and she's it's just, just in it and mm. um and his prior made that her that's her choice and I just love that but it wouldn't be for me mm-hmm. and she and but I can take things that she does and apply that to my life that I love same things with other working moms mm-hmm. I mean I see especially with you and you have an older son mm-hmm. Um, f- flown the coop, pro- you know, really flown the coop. Oh my gosh. Oh, no. And I just, I am so glad I'll take from you over the years of coming. How did you cope with that? And mm-hmm. I'm already going to stuff that in my toolbox. So that's been something, a way for me to survive in the, 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 the gift of being a mother. Yes. I try to remember it's a gift. A hundred percent. God gave me this gift for a reason. So make sure you, yeah. you, um, give yourself grace, but, mm-hmm. but, but take it serious. Like, I, do do the work. Yeah, exactly. Do the work. Mm. And doesn't that apply for anything great in life? <laughs> it's true. Right? A great career, a great yeah. marriage relationship, a relationship with a child. Mm. Nothing comes easily or by accident. It requires yeah. concerted effort and attention, you yes. know, and whatever we, we water will grow. Mm. So I, I'm with you. I, you know, there were, there were some days where it was hard going back to work and not being present, mm. but I was intentional about, okay, well, if I can't be there at night, I'm just going to get up really early in the morning, yes. you know, and I'll make up that time in other ways. Yes. And that's where I found that stretching and that growing. And sure, I mean, there were days where I was a little extra tired or a little extra depleted, but you know, it's, it's like make good, you yeah. know, it's not the norm and it's not traditional, but again, you can't put things in a box, can yes. you? Well, and, and I know you had had this with your mother when you have a wonderful mother, mm. <laughs> What a gift. Right. Because I I don't know if you do this or did this. I always go back to things that I learned or she taught me. Mm. Um, mostly about how to not take life too serious. Mm-hmm. Because if you do, it's no fun. Right, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and how to to truly pat yourself on the back because not everyone's always going to pat you on the back. Mm-hmm. So learn how to do that for yourself. That's exactly right. You know, right. Stop, don't seek affirmation from yes. others because that is, that's an empty pursuit. Yes, it is. You and know, you'll always be unhappy and you will always be unhappy. Self affirm, you know, learn to, uh, if you have, yeah. believe in a higher power, you know, yes. seek your aff- affirmation from God. Yes. Um, but yes, I, and I agree lift with you. Those around you up, up. because that's joy. Mm hmm. I've always had, I just, I've always enjoyed, well, I've always been a bubbly personality person in general, and it's very authentic and real to me because that attracts the same. Like attracts like, of course it does. And, um, and so I think that's, uh, she she just set the template for that Yeah, and I'm really grateful for it. Well, and I, you know, and you, um, have definitely gleaned a lot of wisdom Mm -hmm. in just watching those around you and also trial and error and putting things into practice and things will ebb and flow. You'll find as, as Zoe gets older, you know, the time changes and they want less. I I want to, I hate to break the bubble, but, but they're going to want less and less of you and the teenage thing, man. And that's for real. So be prepared because suddenly you'll be like, but wait, you, you don't want me around at all anymore. You know, you, not even a hug in public. Oh, it's heartbreaking. I know. So that's it. I'm going to stop right there. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, it's such an interesting thing to navigate. And I think the most important word through it all is just grace. Yes. Grace, understanding, acceptance, fluidity, that's and knowing true. nothing stays the same forever. Yes. Right. And there's no one way to do things. And there is no one way to do things. Um, and talk about just how long have you been married? You know, your relationship. And I know you have uh, stepchildren as well. Yeah. So, you know, that was my journey too. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's, you know, it's an added blessing in your life when you have it. Oh, absolutely. No, yeah. I, I married one of the most calm, kind, very smart men. Mm. And very good looking. All right. <laughs> good job. So it's an important piece of the puzzle. Isn't it though? Um, you got to be attracted yes. to your spouse. Yes. And someone, I think what, what Chris and I, Chris and I, we've been together for, uh, we'll be married, what is this year? 24, 14 years this year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think what attracted us is that he always tells this best story where when he's in the dating scene in his late twenties, he, uh, he would date a lot of a lot of gals, lots of beautiful gals, da, da, da. And, and I'd always say, "Well, why didn't you stick with that one or this one?" And, and he always said, "Well, because they're I didn't like them." Mm. 
And I thought that was so interesting. And I mm-hmm. thought, this is very curious. I, mm-hmm. that, it was very intriguing to me because I thought, what does he mean by this? And, and at the end of the day, it's so true. When you are going to choose your partner, you'd best like them. Mm-hmm. Is this the one you want to do things with? Is That's this right. the, the one you want to sit on the couch with? Is this the one you want to talk about work with? And, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I chose extremely well. Mm. And I'm so grateful for that. I mean, I have a fantastic role model and a dad too, but yeah. you really, I, I don't know how you, how it's been for you, but have, finding that balance again with, yes. I, I don't, I couldn't have someone the same as me. I'm very outgoing and forward and mm. he wouldn't have to talk to anybody and be totally happy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I think having that balance, we both appreciate that about yeah. each other. No, I think that's so good. You know, you said something that really resonated with me. It's like, can you spend a day doing nothing with somebody mm. and feel like that day is full? Yeah. And that's what I feel like I found yes. in my life as well. When when life already seems very full, yeah. it's just such an added blessing and a bonus to be able to have. And it's it's peace. Yeah. You know, you don't feel like you have to be doing things. You don't feel like you have to go anywhere, be entertained or surprised. Or, you know, yeah. while all those things are nice and lovely, can you just be and be happy? Yeah. Can you converse? I mean, do you have intelligent conversation? Do you have humor? Mm-hmm. You know, humor, that's going to save a relationship right there. Yes. It will make it, it will save it. Um, yes. So I'm, I'm grateful for that. I've learned a lot of things along the way about relationships, you know, and what matters. I mean, my, my journey has been an imperfect one, which, I mean, we can all say that we're all imperfect. Um, but I've learned a lot. And I guess it's our goal in life to just apply what we've learned and just to keep doing better. Well, and it's right? true. And, and, and it, it's, it's about, especially when you're married, you have to also watch that codependent line mm-hmm. um, because you, you are each other's partner and, and business partner and life partner, everything partner. Uh, I find that I, I really have to, like, we both have to remind each other, no, okay. It sounds like this actually doesn't have to, this actually doesn't involve me. Mm. It sounds like you might need time, space, whatever it might be. Maybe it's not even something big. It's just recognizing when there's something that you're leaning on into your partner for that that maybe you know they can't fill. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's easy to do so because they're your rock. Right. Um, and so calling that out has helped us a lot because then it's really getting to the heart of the issue, which is you need to go go figure that out. Mm-hmm. And I, I surround you with my love. Go figure it out. Yeah. Um, instead of taking it out on the other. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. Respect. Yeah. And, and just somebody who loves you for who you are. Yeah. It's the tried, tried and true phrase. It's not untrue. No, it is not Timeless. untrue. Timeless. Just love me for who I am. I'm mm-hmm. worthy as I am. Yeah. I don't have to perform for this. Yes. You know, I'm curious. You were very strong. I, I mean, you're you're so sweet. And anybody who's watching and, and listening, they can let's see and tell that you just have the kind of soul. You're just so lovely, but you are, you're a powerhouse, Maddie. I mean, <laughs> you really are. And you have, you've had lots of opportunities come your way. You know, merit was a new opportunity. It forced me to move. I never thought I would ever leave Houston and never in my wildest dreams. And here I am in the Dallas Fort Worth area. Here you are. Talk about that because you've been married for 14 years, you know, being such a strong female and having these opportunities, you know, these can be disruptors in a family's life. How, how do you handle that and the balance of that? Choose your husband well. <laughs> number one. Yes. Uh, number two, it goes back to priorities. Always keep that in check. Yeah. And, and, you, and when you feel you need to rebalance, rebalance it. Mm-hmm. But uh, it is, it is a, it, I think it's about knowing two, you know, two big careers is, is a lot. My husband's a CEO. What does he do? He runs hospitals. Wow. So um, it's a very demanding career. And uh, we've kind of traveled around with Mm -hmm. his career, which has been fantastic. Um, And we've actually been settled for 10 years straight, which is highly unusual Mm -hmm. for administrators. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So, um, but I think what it really does come down to us supporting each other. There are times when he he's rising Mm -hmm. and and his star just needs to be supported. And there are times when I have an opportunity to rise and he's right there Mm. and it doesn't always make every day easy, but when you know what you both are building together and why you're doing it, um, is really important. And we both also, uh, I think when you've been in the corporate world a while, uh, we're also pretty good at keeping each other's egos in check. Mm, That's a good one. Really doing it. Yeah. Are you doing this just, to, to prove to yourself you can, mm-hmm. great. Okay, fine. Let's be clear on that. Right. 
Um, or are you doing this because, you know, as when I joined Merit, yeah. getting to build something? And this is something... A you, passion uh, when calling. When will you ever have the chance to build a television network again? Right. Um, and that's something it's hard to say, well, yeah, let's we'll figure it out. Mm-hmm. And you do. But it's about that partnership. Right. And you're right. And the, and the balance and yep. there's got to be a give and take and it it's got to be reciprocal. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, my guest today is Maddie Zering from Merritt street. She is um, in charge of our marketing and, and we can talk more about merit and marketing and what, <laughs> things that you and I do together and, and whatnot. But really what I, I want you here for, and what I love having you here for is just a woman to woman conversation about doing life in this space and, and how we do it and how we choose to see things. Um, I think that your pearls of wisdom can enlighten somebody or at least get someone thinking, hmm, she did it that way. Maybe I ought to think about that too. So we're going to take a quick break and thank our sponsors and we'll be right back. If you have followed me for a while, you know I love a meticulously clean home. And when I say clean, I also mean non-toxic. What do I use to get my home sparkly clean? It's Branch Basics. It is the only non-toxic, all-natural, plant-based cleaning products that are so seriously effective. It is safe for your skin, safe for your pets, safe for your children, even so safe, you can wash your fruits and veggies with these products. I'm telling you what, their starter pack will replace every cleaner in your entire house. Their all natural concentrate is free of fragrance, free of hormone disruptors and harmful preservatives. Need I say more? You no longer have to wear a hazmat suit while you're cleaning up. For a limited time, head over to branchbasics.com slash over 50 and use code over 50 for 15% off your entire order. That is 15% off your order at branchbasics.com slash over 50 with promo code over 50. Choose Branch Basics because cleanliness matters. This episode brought to you by iRestore, the clinically proven advanced hair growth system designed for women who want to say goodbye to thinning hair and hello volume. Ladies, we all know the struggle seeing too much hair in our hairbrush or going down the drain in the shower. Enough is enough. If you're tired of dealing with thinning hair or hair loss, listen to this. iRestore Elite is the most powerful device on the market packed with 500 lasers and LEDs to provide maximum scalp coverage to help you grow thicker, longer, healthier hair. And this works in tandem with any other hair loss treatment that you're doing. It's FDA cleared. It is low light level therapy, clinically proven method to regrow thicker and fuller hair. And all you need is 12 minutes a day. It works in just three months time. Are you ready to get medical grade red light treatment at home to regrow your hair? For a limited time only, our listeners get $625 off their order when you use code OVER50 at iRestoreLaser.com. That's your order at iRestoreLaser.com with promo code OVER50. Hey, hair loss is frustrating. You don't have to do it alone thanks to iRestore. Welcome back. So we are having a super great conversation with my friend, Maddie Zarang from Merritt Street Media. And we are just talking about being career women, wives, mothers, and kind of figuring it all out. This is just a real heart to heart conversation with a friend um, and somebody who I admire. Um, your path and what you've done is so impressive. But really what I admire more than anything, Maddie, not, not what you've done. You have such a zest a passion. You have an energy. You know, if, if you ever are at Merritt Street Studios, you can't miss Maddie because she is just, she, she's got a million things on her mind and she's got a project and she's excited about it and she's finding people and she's coordinating things. And she just, it, you just can't wait to spill it, you know? And I love that about you. It's just everything you do, you do with zest and zeal and an unbridled passion. And that's how I think we ought to go through life in everything that we do. And as we were in the commercial break, we were talking about something that really strikes a chord with both of us. And that is, um, you talked about the importance of freedom, freedom for a working woman and what that means and its connection to fearlessness. And, you know, I talk about fear a lot on my platform. Um, you know, there's rational fear and irrational fear, right? A rational fear, you're in the woods, a bear's chasing you, yet you better find a way up a tree or out of there or else, you know, you might die. Irrational fear, those are the what ifs. And and a lot of us, 99% of the time, we get stuck in that irrational fear loop. And that's what prevents us 
from really doing great things and experiencing that freedom that you talk about. So I want you to kind of talk about your definition of freedom and what it looks like for you. Yeah, I I thank you for bringing it up because I think everyone has their own interpretation of what being free or freedom really means to them Mm -hmm. in their everyday lives. And of course, there's the societal freedoms that we all enjoy as Americans, which is just phenomenal. And I hope we never lose them um, or forget what it takes to keep us all free. But Mm -hmm. what I was sort of referencing too is is on the everyday level of freedom. Uh, My husband and I, we really built our lives around being able to have choice. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of freedom comes back to choice, having choices, Mm -hmm. not being in a corner. Correct. And neither are both of us pretty strong-willed and independent hmm. people. And so uh, we've made it our point to, to not, we don't want to set up our, we didn't want to set up our lives to be uh, in a way that we would be restricted or, you know, you know uh, at the mercy mm. of a company or a person or whatever it might be. How do you do that? Because there are people yeah. at home probably thinking, well, uh, uh, how? How do you make that happen? Yeah. Well, number one, I mean, on the financial front, we live very well on one income. Mm-hmm. So we've never built our life financially around what we've ever earned. <laughs> Smart. <laughs> Earn. So you've lived under your means. You live under your yes. means because that's the first way mm-hmm. in the practical everyday life that you can actually really guarantee that for yourself. That's right. Uh, and then you also, you make you and your fi- family a priority. Mm-hmm. So you have to not make decisions based on what you think a company will do or you think what will happen to your job next year or whatever. You don't make decisions based on that. You make them based on what's important to you in that moment. Mm-hmm. And if you still uh, love what you're doing and you and you know you can bring value, then stay forward and don't worry about it because it's in God's hands anyway. Mm-hmm. So having that sort of perspective gives me a ton of freedom because at the end of the day, I mean, my mother has said so many times, because I'm type A and I'm a planner, mm-hmm. and she has said so many times, you know, God starts laughing the minute you make a plan. Isn't that the truth? Again, another timeless phrase, but right. it is so true. And um, and that doesn't mean that we're supposed to sit back and do nothing. No. That doesn't mean that. Yeah. But we make plans and then we find out, was our plan in alignment with God's plan yes. or was it not? Yes. You know, and then we see, well, if it didn't play out, there was probably a reason, reason for it not for playing it. out. Yeah. And and the enriching, ex- that's why whatever you are doing, the, another way to uh, handle that freedom is to make sure that what you are showing up to every day, whatever it is, mm-hmm. parenting, motherhood. A, a, a career job that you're 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 one bringing your all and you enjoy it. Mm. And I think all of us have been in a position when you start when I at least for me when you when you start to feel like am I still enjoying this mm-hmm. and you just it's that you can just I'm rubbing my fingers together you can you can just feel that when you start to feel that that's mm-hmm. when I know okay is this still is this what what's worth doing for me right not my checkbook not this person or that is still what's right. And, and I think having that sixth sense Mm -hmm. helps quite a bit. Um, and it gives you freedom because if it's not, well, what is it? What is it I want to do? Right. And so we, we don't have to constantly build ourselves around jobs and what we're not defined by those. Exactly. It's, it's the freedom comes in, uh, being innovative and creative. Mm. And if there's one thing today with the internet that you can do better than you could have, maybe some of our sisters before us 20 years ago could right. do, um, is uh, so many more choices. Isn't that the truth? Of how you can I mean, contribute. <laughs> I never would have had this career, honestly. I wouldn't have been able to leave the news business if it weren't for how this business reinvented itself yeah. and the creation of the YouTube, the podcast space. Yes. So industry changes. And, and because of what has sort of come to the platforms now, it, all, it kind of brings us back full circle to marketing that is, you can actually create a business, you can start something, you can self-market. All it takes is a great idea, authenticity. That's mm-hmm. what you spoke to earlier. And you can become your own brand ambassador. You can become yes. your own advertiser. You know, you're not dependent on others anymore to yes. put you out there. Yes. Even as a, as a broadcaster, I don't need a broadcast entity to broadcast yes. me anymore. The model changed. The model changed. Totally flipped. And, and, and the model, the business model for women, especially women in marketing or storytelling or, or creative careers has totally changed too. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, I won't go into detail on it, but one of my dear friends, she, she's created this great collective, the Maven Collective, and she brings together her mavens mm-hmm. around different projects that 
inspire her that she knows someone else in her circle can contribute to. Um, some of these are p- totally pro bono. Some of them are, uh, you know, commercial. And it is so inspiring to build a team that's not bent on a W-2 mm-hmm. or, uh, you know, well, am I going to get promoted next year? But it's a right. collective of people um, in particular women bringing their careers and their power and their expertise together to make magic for someone else's product or brand or whatever it might be. Um, and I tell you, you get a lot much better work um, and product out of some spirited collective like that than you do yes. um, sometimes with a bunch of employees. <laughs> yeah, well, that's very true. And therein lies more freedom mm. because you could be inspired by by greatness and by ideas and that choose flow what you want to work on and choose what you want to work on and yeah. how you want to work yeah. and yeah I mean I think we can all hook back and look back at times in our lives where we felt that I'm suffocating I'm drowning this isn't me anymore this isn't it's not my calling anymore it's, I'm not creative here anymore I'm not appreciated here anymore yeah. you know that value system how you value you, how you, the other entity values you. And it, it can take a checking and a realigning, um, but that can be really, really scary for a lot of people yes, to well, do. And, and may I ask you, looking back into your 40s, mm-hmm. do, what do, you, do, you, do you feel like the 40s, I always hear this, the 40s are the new 50s or the mm-hmm. 40s are the new 30s, I don't know. So yeah. People say all different things. But of course, they just to make you, you feel better <laughs> in the decade is why they say it. When you look back on yeah. your 40s, do you feel like you're more free now than you were then or do you feel you're just as free? As, as free and choice? Honestly, Maddie, I feel like every decade gets better. Mm-hmm. I, I felt the 40s were quite liberating. Um, you know, and I sort of attribute that to going through menopause, perimenopause. Mm-hmm. You know, when, when you kind of lose your hormones and lose your mind, you lose your mouth at the same time. <laughs> oh, no, this is what's coming. <laughs> this okay. is what's coming. No, but it's quite liberating because here's the upside. You start saying stuff that you've repressed all mm-hmm. those years, and it's like the cork yes. pops and out it comes. So mm-hmm. talk about freedom. That's liberating because the truth that you've been feeling that you've hidden because of fear of how others will take it. It's like, nope, you're going to take me as I am. This is as I am. These are my thoughts, my beliefs, and they're unfiltered. So I, you know, I really loved that liberation of just being authentically truthful, speaking it, you Mm -hmm. know, not just thinking it, but speaking it. Mm -hmm. Um, and the fifties I've, I have found to be, um, a little bit more relaxed, I can't mm. quite explain it. There's a little bit more acceptance that's come with everything, mm. a little bit more of a reprioritization of what truly matters in life. Mm. Um, I think as career women and just in general, there's this, there's this climbing, 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 right? Attainment, achievement, being driven. And then suddenly it became about relationships, yeah. quality of time, peace, relaxation, purpose, intent, Mm. um, connectivity and all the things that really matter and suddenly stuff, you know, and I, my journey has been a lot about this in the past couple of years, stuff and things and, you know, places and and things that I thought mattered didn't matter anymore. And Mm. that, and that too ties into the freedom that you talk about because you start to release these chains of bondage of, what life should look like or how I should be or how I should look or how I should present the shoulds start dropping off. And therein lies the opportunity and the curiosity to discover new things. Um, and, and I'm, I'm really glad that you brought up the fact that, and this was my biggest mistake. My biggest, one of my biggest regrets is that I did not live below my means for a long, long time. You know, I was enjoying life as life was happening And the wisdom that I've gleaned in my fifties is that you better, you better check yourself, you know, before you wreck yourself type thing, you know, be smart, be savvy, under, under spend and prepare so that you can have the choice. You know, you can have two jobs. You can have one job. (laughs) If you needed to have no job for a while, you could, you know, it's that kind of wisdom that I think really kicks in. Lucky for you, it happened I love earlier. It. Well, well, lucky for me, my hu- husband's very frugal too. So, so that I'm helps. the out account, he's the in account. Yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but I'm no angel. And, checks and balances. <laughs> you have that. But, but yeah, yes. you know, I love I love what you say about 
um, the, the just falling off. Just it is a, that's what it feels like a yeah, falling off. Like a, a slothing. What do snakes yes. do? <laughs> Slo- yeah, they lose their skin. Yeah. Yes, you do. You feel like you're shedding layers of mm. skin that weigh you down. Things of that you thought were important that are no longer mm. important. And it's like you know, I can wake up, put on some BB cream and a lip balm, <laughs> my same Target jeans and T-shirt and <laughs> flip flops, and go out to the world and be happy as a clam. Yeah. And that's a great feeling. Yeah, because, well, and especially with you getting to know you, this is coming from your inside. Yeah. And you can see it because it radiates for you too. I mean, yeah. you have a hard job to get up, certainly at the time of day, but then to be on for America. Yeah. Um, I, I know that that well is not something you can fake. No, you can't. That's a real well. It and is. And you, oh, I tearing up a little bit because no. you just, you bring that to all of us. Well. And, um, and it's obviously usually very much a thankless job because you don't get to see everyone <laughs> That's so sweet. on the other side waving, saying, we love you. We, we love you guys. Um, so I can imagine that to fill that up, you have to, that's something you give to yourself. Sure. It's not, it's not your studio. It's not your assistance or anything like that. That's, mm-hmm. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. It's a, it's a self fill and mm-hmm. it's a self discipline. As you know, with anything good in life, you, yeah. you can't have it all, right? I mean, wouldn't you agree? There's oh, no yeah. such thing as having it There's all. There's sacrifice. And even with, you know, crazy hours like that, the joy is in the, the communicating a story in yeah. a different way, being a different type of a broadcaster, having a different type of a synergy with my co-anchor than, than you would see elsewhere, yeah. you know, being different, being a, a, an example of, um, uniqueness yeah. and what that looks like. That's always been my mantra is okay. don't, don't do it like everybody else. How can you rewrite <laughs> this script? No pun yes. intended. You know what I'm saying? And I know you can relate to this, right? <laughs> yes. Well, it, it reminds me of something I haven't even brought up, but it, it, uh, around hobbies, like I've mm. never had a lot of hobbies. Just yeah. not, I mean, I drink a lot of wine. I love wine. <laughs> that could be a good um, hobby. I love, love wine. Yeah. But my sister's always like, I don't think that can be a hobby. And I'm like, I don't like yeah, it. I think we'll, we'll cla- yeah. in midlife, we'll classify that as a hobby. <laughs> but I, I, um, I bring it up because in the, in the last year, really, two years maybe, um, I was inspired. I, I had done some uh, publicity work with a private astronaut named John Schaffner. And he's one of the fittest guys ever. He's in his late 60s and he's just amazing. And he uh, had told me a lot about how he kind of biohacks. He didn't call it that, but I call it that, where you really are trying to engineer your longevity and and figure out all of your different chemicals. So I've been kind of getting into this a little bit by doing some private tests where mm. blood panels that your doctor wouldn't normally yes, order. Yeah. And, and so for instance, I did this in the summer and one of my panels came back and it was high cortisol. Mm, oh, I, imagine that in the imagine media. Imagine that. <laughs> oh my gosh, and I thought, okay, well, you, we all do our Googling. How do I find, low, how do I lower, lower my cortisol? Yeah. And well, it, one of the, one of the things was add a supplement to your diet, you know, mega, um, the mega oil. Sure. So I started doing that and then I did my panel a week ago and it's down. Oh, see. So it's like, there's the, the other thing I have to remember is that Yes, I, I'm, a, I'm a powerhouse in my career, not because mm-hmm. I'm a powerhouse, but because I take care of myself mm-hmm. and I have things outside of this that enrich what I can bring to the table wherever I work Yes, or with whomever I'm working. And it's just, that's, that's what I have been trying to practice a little bit more because mm-hmm. that's what can bring your creativity to everything. It fills up your cup. Yep. Um, and so, you know, kind of goes back to not taking it too serious. No, and not, and not burning out and just yeah. knowing that there's balance in all things yeah. and that you can't do all things all the time. Yeah. Um, what's the best piece of advice you've ever received? Oh my gosh. I know. And I, that's a hard question. Cause I know you've probably gotten a lot from, so you've, you've, in, you've intersected with so many amazing people, but if yeah. you can think to something and it could even be a mom, a grandma, or, or <laughs> even just a colleague, you know, something uh, that stuck with you. You know, it, it's something that there's so many. I mean, I have incredible family, and I would start with my family. Uh, one of the things that always stood out to me about my grandmother, I'm from Tucson, Arizona originally, and she was very much in her gardens and, and just potted plants everywhere. And, of course, mm. it's really hard to keep things growing in southern Arizona. Sure. So she was a master She was at it craft. all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, she, I just remember she used to go to an Episcopalian church and she would take my sister and I every once in a while. And one time, you know, she just kind of stopped going when you know, I was 10 or something. And I said, Nana, why'd you, why'd you stop going? And she said, you know, God is all around me every day. 
when I'm out here potting my plants or doing whatever it might be, I'm with God. I'm with his butterflies. And, I'm, mm. and at the, it, it, you could take that as such a cheesy thing. Thank goodness I was just young enough to be like, wow. Mm. And it still blows my mind, the simplicity of that. it. And I think uh, what my family, all of my, all sides of it have taught me is that a simple life is a good life. Mm. You don't need a lot to be happy and appreciate what God puts in front of you every day. Appreciate that you get home every day safe. Appreciate that you have a health and that your children and your babies and your husband have health. And that's what everything. matters. It's everything. It's not all the other stuff. It's hard to keep that check sometimes. Isn't but, it though? Well, you know, that's some people pray. Everyone does it different. My grandmother garden and she's had her conversations. <laughs> with the butterflies and with yeah. God. Yeah. And the best piece of advice tends to come from those who are um, far older than us and yeah. have far more wisdom it's than true. we do in this crazy world. And I love that. I can't, I honestly, Maddie, I couldn't think of anything better to end on. You oh. know, you, um, you just drove home the point that no matter how much we do, how big we are or aren't in terms of what this world deems as big mm. in the whole microcosm. We are really, really quite small and we ought to step back and appreciate um, God's beautiful picture out there and realize what's important in life. Yeah. Do our part. Yeah. You know, try to, try to, try to leave a mark, try to make a difference, try to impact lives, try to lift and encourage and inspire and do what you love. Um, and do what you have love. Fun. But we have so my many days. <laughs> goodness, keep it in perspective, right? Yeah. <laughs> keep it in perspective. Yeah. Thank you. Um, real quick, do you have any funny Dr. Phil stories? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the audience would love one. Oh my gosh. I think, well, I'll tell you, it's not specifically Dr. Phil, but when I was having a chat with my daughter about what this could look like for us, yeah. for me taking this role, and uh, she said, well, number one, she was so smart, and she said, Mom, uh, you know, do you, are you happy in your job now? I said, well, not exactly. She said, well, you should do it. What makes you happy? And I was like, oh, thank goodness. She's heard it. Um, but then too, she said, and as long as I can take a microphone and be in Dr. Phil's studio audience and hand around the microphone, everybody, you can take this job. So I still have not yet talked to Dr. Phil okay. about making that happen, happen, but it will come. It will come for sure. <laughs> so he deserves that. Yes, she does. She does. <laughs> thank you, Maddie. No, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. It's truly an honor thank a privilege. You. And to all of your audience, I, I saw some of your audience mm -hmm. on your tour and they, it's just yeah. an incredible tribe you have. Isn't it an, an amazing um, you don't collection build that of women? Unless it, there's a truth and an authenticity there. So yeah, thank congratulations. You. Well, the coming, we're all lucky. Hey, coming from a marketing specialist like yourself, <laughs> um, I, I appreciate that so much. And I, I feel so blessed. You know, it's, um, can be a little scary putting yourself out there and being real and transparent and you definitely take hits, but if you choose to ignore those and look at the beauty, the beauty is the collective connectivity and that we realize we're far more similar than we are different. Mm -hmm. And we've got so much to learn from one another. So, true. so I'm grateful. Thank you, Maddie. Thank you. What a wonderful conversation. And boy, her grandmother's words really, really hit home, don't they? Um, love Maddie. And I hope you love her as much as I do. I have a feeling you will be seeing more of Maddie on my platforms. Um, but again, thank you for being here for over 50 and flourishing. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us a comment below. Tell us what you thought about today's podcast and what you'd like to see in future episodes. And if you are listening, wherever you listen to a podcast, if it's Apple or Spotify, you name it, rate, review, subscribe, and share, um, RRSS. And that's how we, uh, spread this platform and we get other women looped in and more incredible women on this platform to be able to talk about success and living our best lives in midlife. Thank you for being with me and I will see you next week. This episode brought to you by iRestore, the clinically proven advanced hair growth system designed for women who want to say goodbye to thinning hair and hello volume. Ladies, we all know the struggle seeing too much hair in our hairbrush or going down the drain in the shower. Enough is enough. If you're tired of dealing with thinning hair or hair loss, listen to this. iRestore Elite is the most powerful device on the market packed with 500 lasers and LEDs to provide maximum scalp coverage to help you grow thicker, 
longer, healthier hair. And this works in tandem with any other hair loss treatment that you're doing. It's FDA cleared. It is low light level therapy, clinically proven method to regrow thicker and fuller hair. And all you need is 12 minutes a day. It works in just three months time. Are you ready to get medical grade red light treatment at home to regrow your hair? For a limited time only, our listeners get $625 off their order when you use code OVER50 at iRestoreLaser.com. That's your order at iRestoreLaser.com with promo code OVER50. Hey, hair loss is frustrating. You don't have to do it alone thanks to iRestore.